Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and today we have a very special guest. His name is Will Hare, and he is the co-founder of Bellavix, which is a full-service marketing agency for Amazon sellers for brands who want to grow their sales on Amazon. He has worked with e-commerce brands for many, many years, leading them in strategic planning, implementation, and using practical skills to build their businesses. He has worked with brands like Instapot and Pyrex, and so we are super, super excited to have Will on the show for us today. But before we get there, I just want you to remember that we have just a few days left of our Thanksgiving sale. Now, what does that mean? I, I, a sale opportunity offer. It's where we're going to offer the wholesale bundle system to you, plus seven bonuses worth over a thousand dollars of value for you. Courses like the bundle ideas revealed, where there's four hours of bundle opportunities, bundle ideas for you. So if you have no idea what to bundle and you want to bundle, Bundle Ideas Revealed is going to be great for you. It comes with a workbook and the Overthinker's Guide. But the best part is that we've included in this special offer our 40-day bundle challenge. It's you're going to get a checklist and daily homework of what you need to do to launch a bundle in 40 days. And those who have completed this 40-day challenge launched their bundles within 40 days. If you have never launched a bundle before and you're really nervous or you've just been nervous to pull the trigger, now is your opportunity to get the bundle challenge and the wholesale bundle system plus all of these bonuses and save over a thousand dollars. I mean, who doesn't want to save a thousand dollars, right? So mommyincome.com forward slash Thanksgiving. We're thankful for you and we are thankful for your opportunity to start and grow your Amazon business. And now is the best time to do that. You won't see this special pricing or these bonuses ever again not like this this is just a special time where we're just thankful for you and we're thankful for you wanting to start this business and grow with bundles and we've got your back we've got your back mommyincome.com forward slash thanksgiving all right now let's get to today's guest will welcome to the show i'm so glad that you're here Excellent. Kristen, thanks so much for having me. I'm super excited to be part of this show. So thanks for having me on. Yeah, let's let's just get to first things first. Let's talk about this New York Jets fan thing. Oh. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we want to talk about Amazon and branding and pricing and all that. But let's get to the real thing because, you know, I, I'm a huge football fan. And um, I know Love that it. you had mentioned that you're a, a Jets fan, which in these mm -hmm. times have kind of been a little bit unfortunate. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about that. Are you from New York? Yeah, I actually grew up in New York, Long Island, New York. I grew up in Seaford specifically. And um, yeah, I've been a, I've been a Jets fan because uh, my favorite color is green. And when I was picking a team, I went with the green team, which hindsight, maybe I should have went with the blue team. But I've been a fan since. I'm optimistic that I'll see a Super Bowl before I die. Uh, but, you know, every year they keep proving me wrong. But the uh, the optimistic fan side of me is like, this year is going to be different. I was saying it. Then Aaron Rodgers got hurt. Now I'm... Uh, I'm saying it this year again. <laughs> well, I hope they do a lot better even in this season. I know that that was very hopeful, you know, having someone like Aaron Rodgers come and yeah. join the organization and, you know, bringing a lot of experience to the table there. But at the same time, you know, it's the things happen, right? And they're doing not too bad without him. And, you know, if he's still going to be there and get healed, then maybe next year will be your year. So I know I waited decades before my yeah. team was ever in a Super Bowl. And we got a little bit, uh, we've been blessed the last couple of years to have a great team. But um, I hear you there because some of those rough years, it's hard to be a fan over and over when they're just uh, like not doing well. <laughs> yeah, over and over. But it's fun watching Kansas City this year. I love your quarterback, your tight end, the fact that, uh, Oh my God, I just drew a blank of her name, but uh, the celebrity dating Travis Kelsey, <laughs> she's at all the games. I'm telling you, one of the worst things about being a Chiefs fan right now is like, I'm not a hater at all. I'm actually happy for them, whatever. I could care less. I, I like the football and I like the game, but um, you know, it's always good for the franchise, right? So yeah. it's one of those things where... Um, where you know you you like when people bring more eyes to your team and everything else but like when i wear my jerseys people think i'm a swifty and not actually uh, <laughs> an actual kansas city fan so then i have to go into the story i'm like y'all 
25 years ago on my honeymoon, we went to Arrowhead for my honeymoon. So I am not a bandwagon Swifty fan. I am a diehard Chiefs fan before it was cool. So before they won Super Bowls. (laughs) (laughs) So, okay, now that our love of football is kind of out of the way, you know, we can we can actually get to why we're here, which is talking about (laughs) increasing your sales on Amazon. And I know that you have worked with companies, you've worked with a lot of different brands. So tell me a little bit about your story and how you got into helping brands um, in general. Absolutely. So I probably have like a like an untraditional way of how I I kind of discovered Amazon and marketplaces. Uh, probably like everyone else, while I was in college and stuff, I did retail arbitrage. So buy products on sale and then flip them. My wife was a big couponer, so we made uh, lots of money doing that. Uh, but after I graduated and professionally, I started working for marketing agencies, and I like to say Google PPC. Uh, is mm-hmm. the gateway to Amazon. So I came in as an advertiser and my ba- I've been doing advertising for you know over 12 years at this point. And um, I, the c- accounts I kept getting put on was e-commerce and they were always like, Amazon was always kind of on a side. So they're like, oh, you know, we're also doing this. Can you look into it? And then slowly after time, I became the the Amazon advertising guy and I started working at other agencies and diving deeper And then in 2018, just got tired of like typical entrepreneur. I just got tired of doing it for everyone else. I had enough experience working at other agencies that I was like, I would, this is what I would do. And this is how I would do it differently. And in 2018, we started Bellavix and we've been, we've been rocking ever since. And we're really, really blessed to have the kind of brands that, that come and we get to work with. And it's still fun and enjoy the challenges. And luckily, as you know, Kristen, Amazon's always changing. Like I have terrible ADD, so thank God it's never the same and it keeps me on my toes. So uh, we're gainfully employed thanks to all the nuances of the system. And it, it's really a fun place to be, you know, it's, it's, it's a fun platform to learn. Yeah, for sure. I know that I joke about Amazon keeping me in business. I'm like, I teach their strategies and their policies and their changes. So every time they change something, I'm like, oh, there's my job security. <laughs> I still have something new to teach because they just changed this policy or that policy. So, um, you know, I'm not running out of things to say when it comes to Amazon because they, they're, you know, again, I love the ADD comment there. My son is very, and my husband is very much the same. So everything always has to be shifting around us. Otherwise, they get super bored and don't know what to do. <laughs> so. Yeah. We'll go find trouble. It might be a gender thing. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I like it. Um, okay, so what what have you learned? You know, you talked about coming from Google PPC, and that's kind of the ground here. What you know versus 2018, fast forward to 2023. What what are some old policies that have kind of like come up and have changed within PPC? Because I know there's a lot of my people that have been around for a while, and maybe they haven't messed with with ad campaigns just yet, and those types of things. So what have you seen something as a shift into what was old and now is new yeah i'd say from old like you know being on the platform before they had that beautiful graph and having to download sheets and like do it that way was terribly painful so in terms of um like fundamentally it always works the same like it's a i think it's a second price auction ppc system so you pay uh, one cent more than the last bidder uh effectively works the same in terms of like keyword harvesting doing bid adjustments based on cpc uh, negating terms inside campaigns to kind of get around that from uh, so from like the the fundamentals it's it's always kind of the same what's really interesting and like how it's evolved over time is become more of a full funnel experience so it's it's about building audiences and touching customers at different stages of their journey and everything from like manage your customer experience and the email marketing that they've incorporated Amazon Post and I think Spire their social media s type platform, Amazon Live. Uh, we got a bunch of brands in like the Amazon uh, creator connections programs or ability to work with Amazon associates on a commission basis to have them promote their products of our brands on their social. And even programmatically like uh, DSP, uh, building audiences and building, you know, using streaming TV and connected devices to uh, get the multi you know, the multi-channel experience and touching them on their mobile devices, their whoever they're sharing the accounts with on their desktop. So what we mm. what has evolved, it used to be like Amazon was just the bottom of the funnel. Catch your customers as they're searching for your product and then in market. Now it's their ability to expose brands to shoppers before they know they have this problem or have mm-hmm. shown intent or some type of context that this product might solve a solution. 
So we have the ability to build these audiences and and grow like grow Amazon only brands. And it's it's a really the evolution has been crazy, as I'm sure you can relate, Kristen. Yeah, that's what I think is the biggest opportunity right now on Amazon is the, the that they've opened up the floodgates. I mean, years ago, I'm I'm old school. I've been on Amazon since 2008, you know, and then they're, they're for, for so many years, you were like blacklisted if you tried to reach out to a customer. Amazon oh, yeah. owned the customer. Mm-hmm. Now, they still like to control the customer, but they're giving us more access as brands to directly reach our customers, even though we could be like Amazon only brands and i love what you said there about amazon only brands because so many people over the years have asked me oh do you have your own brand do you have this and that and i'm like yeah i said but i really only sell on amazon i'm no in, i'm not interested in going to target or these other places because i can reach so many more customers with my brand on amazon alone without even having like i don't even have a shopify store why i don't need to i use amazon why because they reach more customers than i could ever do on my own so i love that you said amazon only brands because because so many more opportunities are available now for people to release a brand or launch a brand on Amazon and not have to be everywhere with all the things all the time because they're allowing us to start, they're starting to allow us to gather and keep our own customers and uh, sell things to them and maybe indirectly still because we're using yeah. Amazon's platform. But before it was such a hush hush, not allowed. You couldn't reach out to your customers. You couldn't email them. You couldn't build a yeah. list based on what they were purchasing. And so now that that's incorporating and changing, I feel like the floodgates are open to build really solid brands. Amen. Preach, Krista. That's what I'm <laughs> saying. And you hit on the head, like 50% of e-commerce happens on Amazon. And now with Shopify, the MCF feature, the buy with prime, like they're just encroaching and taking more of that e-commerce market share. So like, you know, why mess around? Just just get in with the, with it while you can. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, I know you like to talk about pricing and profitability when when it comes to brands. And, you know, that's really kind of some of the key things we want to talk about here today, because as people are launching new brands, there's always going to be competition. There's always, you know, Amazon wants to have the lowest price, but they're also not Walmart. So we also want to think about how do we bring quality and price to the table in an e-commerce platform when we don't have customers that are able to touch and feel our products. So so what are our companies doing about about the pricing strategies with brands, especially if they're unknown? Yeah, it definitely varies. I mean, what I tell people all the time, like Amazon's not a race to the bottom. Price your product appropriately, but have the proper material to justify that price. So if I'm selling, I like to tell the, uh, we worked with a, uh, a mattress company a while ago and they were premium mattress. They sold their mattress, uh, a queen size mattress for like $1,200. Uh, but the median price for a queen size mattress on Amazon is $250. So mm-hmm. like the strategy and how you look at it, it's just a little different. And so, for example, in that case, it's a conquesting strategy. We showcase ads to similar brands in the space. Uh, We also had top-notch quality listings. So the images are on point, video content, tons of unboxing, uh, bullets, A-plus content. And we showcased all this to show, like, this is a premium experience, and this is why you spend $1,200 on this mattress and $250 on these competitor mattresses. So... Pricing, I I tell all my brands, price it accordingly. Obviously, getting more positive reviews helps with the higher price point. It justifies it. But really, the crux of it is like killer content around it and an advertising advertising marketing strategy that supports, uh, you know, that type of pricing. Yeah, I think we're go- gone are the days where you can just slap up an Amazon listing yeah. and call it a day. I mean, this yeah. is there's so much competition now that we need to showcase our our brands and our quality our quality. Mm-hmm. That's something that in, in e-commerce changes from, you know, like I'm going to, I'm, I'm older, right? You guys, like I'm 40 plus. So I remember pre e-commerce days where there's my children don't ever remember them not being things online, yeah. you know? So b- before that you had to walk into a store and the difference is walking into a Walmart versus a target versus a Louis Vuitton. There are mm-hmm. totally different quality that you can, feel when it comes to the brand you can touch it you can feel it you can feel the quality of it when it comes to our images on amazon all we have is our words and videos now you mentioned something interesting that i i would love to kind of side note here um is on unboxing 
Yeah. And I think that nowadays with so many people and social media and even Amazon getting into like the influencer space of showing live products and different unboxings, how important do you feel like that is from a customer standpoint, or maybe say it's just even an influencer standpoint on the sales and quality of an item when someone's unboxing? I mean, hit on the head. It's super important. And video content's where it at, where it's at. I would recommend, you know, if you're not doing it, it's not uncommon for the brands we work with to just give away a bunch of product to influencers with under the caveat of like, we need unboxing videos and mm -hmm. understanding like eight out of 10 are probably not going to be usable, uh, but two out of 10 will be usable and you can use them everywhere. Uh, it To your point, it showcases the quality of the product. And like from, you know, as you're developing products, as you're considering new markets, as you're considering expanding product lines, uh, the, the customer experience is everything and understanding that they're, they're not able to go to, like to your point, you can't go to Walmart, you can't go to Target, you're not gonna be able to put your hands on this. So giving the customer as much confidence upfront with unboxing, with the quality experience and understanding if you're a digital only brand, you need to step it up in terms of, you know, your that experience, which is different from retail because they know they can just go in, touch it, feel it, does it feel right, so on and so forth. So I, I would say it's paramount and it should be part, you know, if you don't want it on your listing, storefront, uh, in your social media, anywhere that it makes sense. But you should definitely have some unboxing videos and create some really unique experiences. And I think even giving, you know, now that there's reviews where people can leave reviews now, I, I mean, we can get into reviews and I've got, of course, nightmare stories, but I also <laughs> have positive stories where one review can make or break you. But now yeah. customers are the influencers. The customer can buy yeah. from you and leave you a video review and talk about your product. And they don't know you from Adam. They they just, yeah. they bought your product and they can leave pictures and reviews and all these things. I mean, uh, I'll, I'll go back to an experience I had. I, I was looking for a dress for a specific specific event and I don't love going shopping and doing all the stuff. So I'm just like reading the reviews. Does it fit? Does it fit? Does it yep. fit? And then I started seeing people posting pictures of this is what it looks like on. It's not just some model of yep. some dress on here. And I was like, that's going to be great. And sure enough, because of the reviews and because of the pictures people posted, I'm like, this is going to be awesome. And it was, and I was exceptionally pleased with the quality and the things like that. So the more people are showing off the brands, the more people are building trust. Plus on Amazon, let's just be real. Most people go to Amazon because of the speed and the convenience yeah. and the trust that they yeah. have with Amazon. They're, they don't have to whip out their credit card. They know their, their credit card is going to be secure on there. They can hit a buy it now button. And they also know that there's this crazy refund policy or return yeah. policy Amazon has. It's kind of like a no questions asked. If you really don't like something, you can send it back. Now we could have a whole another episode about that and when what needs to change in that policy, but uh, we'll, we'll save that for another day. But the reality is the trust factor is already built into the Amazon marketplace. It's the, yeah. the brands that are then vying for the attention and the trust of customers um, because the platform's already trusted. Yeah. I think you hit it on the head too. Like, uh, you know, everybody can leave a review and like something I hear common is like only disgruntled uh, e-commerce shoppers leave reviews and negative reviews. But to your point with trying on the dresses and that like having a great product and a great customer experience is equally going to compel these shoppers to take photos, share videos and leave them, you know, on on Amazon. Like we don't always pay influencers to work with us and to leave that type of content. Um, and and it's just like really happy customers that are like, check out how this looks and feels. So, you know, back to the customer experience, you know, getting that on point, it'll spill over and it'll lead to, you know, that halo, more sales and more opportunity. Absolutely. Now, what about those negative reviews? I mean, we've all we've all experienced this. I think most people have gotten a negative review and Amazon's really crazy about removing those. So what, what are some of your tips when it comes to maybe someone bringing negative attention to your brand? Yeah, unfortunately, it's super hard to get removed. I could say out of, you know, tons of brands we work with, like very rare have we had a customer experience uh, where we've had conversations and they're like, you're right, I'm going to take that back and make it a five star. Not saying it doesn't happen. I just haven't been exposed to that. Uh, what I will say is that you want to be proactive. You want to be proactive in the sense of like your listing and the information and the the package inserts and like what you include in your package should educate your customers and help manage that experience. Accurate listings is a big thing. 
Uh, I, one of the funniest things I've ever seen is like this woman ordered a patio set and it was beautiful. And she shows you the picture on Amazon and you're like, wow, that's cool. When you get it, it's for a dollhouse that fits in her hand. So it's like, <laughs> you know, of course that listings will get a ton of negative reviews because like that customer's expectation, and that's an extreme case, but it's completely mismanaged. But when you do get negative reviews, we, we have lost the ability to reply as a brand. As far as I know, that hasn't come back and it's been gone for a few years at this point. Um, so just want to acknowledge it, share the information. If you do get buyer messages, you want to prompt and be solutions driven in your responses. So product came damaged, know what to do right away. We, we Our policy is that we send out a new product immediately. We apologize whether it's our fault or not. Customers always right, cliche, but they have a lot of power on, on marketplaces. So you do want to give that good experience. Happy customers, Gary Vee says it a lot in some of his books. Uh, will tell other happy customers and they'll share that experience. So, you know, it's important to just keep those things in mind as you get negative reviews. I am a firm believer in in sharing and and sharing your experiences. I'm one of those people that if I fall in love with the product, um, you, I'm not going to stop talking about. It. I'm just like, oh my gosh, did you guys hear about this? Did you see, you know, this. I, I often bring up the same story. My people are rolling their eyes at their moment at this moment because they're like, yeah, she's going to tell the sunglasses story again. But I am because for those that haven't heard it, it's the same type of thing. I was like, I, I love sunglasses. I have very sensitive eyes. I'm type one diabetic, and I'm always I always have to wear sunglasses. Um, and so I have multiple pairs and I only can buy the ones that, that, that don't have like the nose pieces because I have this great curly hair. And when I flip them up here, like I, they can't get tangled up. So they have to be like one solid piece, you know? Yeah. So I, I'm already picky about that. Um, but you know, I'm like, I, I got a budget. I don't want to spend it on Ray-Bans cause I'm going to like mm -hmm. lose them and they're going to go away. And so I, I want something in between like the dollar store and like my Ray-Bans, right? So um, I found this brand on Amazon. It was a style that I liked. And I thought, okay, this is a good price point. I'll order it. You know, I didn't have a whole ton of high expectations, but this beautiful box that had this gold nice. lettering came in. And then I opened the box and then there's like this cloth that it's like, oh, complimentary cloth to clean this. You open that, then there's another layer of, of packaging that you open the case. And then there's another, you know, cleansing cloth. And there's this beautiful message of how these are scratch resisted and how if I ever have a problem, to go back to the company y'all this was five years ago and i still have this these sunglasses and i will always buy them from this company it's called sonos and i will go back to them a million oh. times because they have this experience that i had online and they only picked them for style and price first i didn't know i was going to have this experience and now i will never forget this brand because of this experience that i had um and so that all makes a difference and so i am like someone always tells me i should do product reviews all the time because yeah. i'm one of those that will be so animated about that and if i love a product good luck getting me to shut up about it um so that that really does you know make a difference when it comes to yeah. people's um experience and just spending another couple Couple dollars on your packaging yeah. can make the difference between um, twenty dollars sunglasses and someone's lifelong experience. Yeah, yeah. And to your point, they weren't the cheapest sunglasses, and somebody reverse engineered that experience. And like, you could do that as a brand. You know, how do I want my customers to feel when that package arrives? Like, we all we all get Amazon packages, and I have horror stories of you know getting something damaged or like wasn't quite what I was looking for. To your case, you know. Uh, Nice sunglasses in your case. I got recently got an iPhone case that was, you know, it was a great experience. And like you people talk about that. And, you know, sometimes I have a podcast to, to, to amplify that even more. <laughs> Awesome. Well, you know, what are some just some final tips here about, you know, you're talking about pricing and profitability and we're talking about these negative reviews. So overall, um, you know, what is a strategy that people can implement right away? You know, talking about, OK, let's let's real quick talk about the fee structure on Amazon, because I will tell you, in my experience on Amazon, um, even just about six years ago, I was at about 24 percent of Amazon fees for overall. And now we're up over 40. Yeah. And so with these fees constantly increasing and a comp competition is is rising and we're having to spend more um you know with advertising and things like that what are some ways to mitigate some of those costs yeah great question so at first i think like there's a gap in the feeds your point 40 percent what i find a couple things like have your all-in costs like what i notice about brands is like they they won't always consider like pricing to the fulfillment center or any additional pricing so like knowing what your all-in cost is uh, will help justify advertising spend and other initiatives. 
that might make sense. Uh, another quick tip at the end of the day, the fees are what they are. Like uh, this is the price to be on Amazon. They, they're egregious at some points and like Q4 specifically, like slashing everybody's inventory and then charging them an overage fee is a bit ridiculous. Um, but be aware. So like a common mistake we see, for example, on top of educating customers on like what the, what their fees are for their specific category. A lot of times we'll find that uh, brands will put in dimension information and it'll be wrong or inconsistent. Mm -hmm. So we'll have like the sunglasses with 10 variations and we'll have 10, 10 different weights, 10 different sizes and like all of them come with fees. So you want to make sure uh, you're locked in and you understand you, you're just consistent and that's you're being charged appropriately. The other thing is like Amazon will randomly change your dimensions. They do package checks. And if if it comes out a little larger, this especially for like poly bag products, like a lot of apparel, you know, sometimes it puffs up. And then if it puffs up, it could be it could be like two or three dollars a unit it, that could like totally crush your margins. Mm. So you got to you got to be you got to be tracking those. And and uh, we use some software to help with that. We're big fans of Gatita or Get IDA. I don't mm -hmm. really know exactly what they're called. Uh, but they're performance based and that's what's super nice about them so like they don't get paid until you get paid uh they do take a 25 percent cut um but what's nice like their system's pretty efficient you can build in the bill of lading you can they'll open cases you may have to follow up on them but it helps with efficiency so to summarize i'd say you know make sure you know your all your all in costs make sure your dimensions and your weights are a hundred percent correct and then consider a software solution like Gatita. There's tons of them, Seller Locker. We're big fans of Gatita. Mm -hmm. um, consider implementing that just so that you can get reimbursements for damaged products or like anything else that might come up that might be costing you money. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for all that. Tell us a little bit more about your company and what your company <laughs> does and how they can help all of us uh, grow our businesses. Yeah, I appreciate it. So Bellavix, uh, uh, we are a marketplace management company. So we're primarily focused on Amazon, Walmart, and Target, and we help brands scale. A lot of what we do is implement marketing and advertising strategies to help level brands up. So if you're if you're a seller and you're wondering, how can I make more money, or you hit a sales plateau, uh, generally we can reverse engineer some strategies to help you kind of level up and get to the next level. And personally, check me out, Will Hair, hair like on your head, but with an E. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm on LinkedIn. I post pretty regularly, and I have a newsletter where I give sellers all the updates similar to you, Kristen, on all the policy changes and what it means for your business. Yeah, awesome LinkedIn uh, posts there. So you guys make sure you check all of the links. They'll be below this video to be able to get in touch with um, Will and his company. And yeah, definitely want to check out that LinkedIn. There's just a ton of stuff there to be learning. I'm ever learning and always learning different things about Amazon and what they're what they're changing this week and next week and next month and all that kind of stuff. And um, you know, just just for uh, sympathetic purposes, um, go Jets. You know, I really hope yes. the best for them. I really do. I'm, I'm not a hater. I love football in general. And I know that eventually it will be your year, even if it's not your. You also mentioned Gary V, which I think is funny because Gary V says that he's going to buy the Jets one day, and oh, maybe, maybe please. when he does, you know, he can he can implement strategies to make them winners at some point. We're going but, uh, to the Super Bowl, Gary. Yeah. If you're listening, come on, man, buy the Jets. Yeah, Gary, buy the Jets. No, I know that. I just remember that from years back. How he said that was one of his major goals was he was gonna eventually like buy and own the Jets and turn turn the franchise around. And I was like, okay, go do that. Um, yeah. That would be. He's super got fun. enough money. We need to hold them to it. I'm with yeah. you. Let's let's get a petition together. <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, if they do, I would love to be a part of that because that would be super fun. I love football no matter what. So uh, may the best may the best team win no matter who it is. Um, and I, again, appreciate your time and your energy here and just all the tips and, and the wisdom that you brought to the table today. I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing and I don't take that for granted. So thank you, Will, for being part of the Amazon files. And you guys, make sure you check out all of the information. It'll be in the links. It'll be below the video. And we'll see you guys same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.